All right. Let me share my screen and start. <clears throat> okay, uh, we're going to start from the beginning, go through the pointers quickly. Uh, um, kind of a review right from the beginning when the earth got cold and the dinosaurs died and we're going to keep going right to the point that we are now and then we're going to talk about some cool techniques so that C++ uses for pointers uh, and then after that uh, we go back to the files and uh, dynamic memory allocation uh, saving uh, dynamic uh, objects into a file all right uh, so essentially um, from IPC 144 what we mentioned about pointers we said that pointers what I say that pointers are essentially type um, types don't give them extra credit so um, if actually somebody asked us to to create uh, something um, uh, create a oh I lost the screen share what happened give me two seconds two seconds let me see what happened hmm Okay, I don't know what happened. Let's fix it. There we go. Um, does everybody have my screen? Uh, let me actually clear it up. Okay, can you give me a thumb up? For the, uh, a thumb down if you don't have my screen. Let's put it that way. If you don't have my screen, give me a thumb down. Okay, I don't see a thumb down, so I'm hoping that everything's good. All right. Okay, so... Uh, I was saying that uh, um, a pointer is essentially a type. So essentially, I can say, uh, so if I have something like um, like integer a, uh, then uh, if they told me to create the language, I would say actually pointer. I would write something like pointer uh, uh, p. Then I would say pointer p is equal to address of uh, a, something like that. Um, so essentially, pointer by itself is a variable. It's nothing extraordinary about it. It's a variable of its own. So essentially, when you create a pointer, like in this code that we see, code that I have written over here, that you see, essentially, if, if this is my memory, and I have a series of cells over here. Now, in this case, let's assume each one of these is a byte. If I have uh, th this, if I assume this is my memory, so this goes to address zero, which means sequence number zero, and then each byte over here has a sequence number based at the, based on the beginning of the file. So essentially, let's say if this is, this could be address two one five nine six. 10 if that's the case then because this becomes the that number 11 this becomes 12 and then 13 and then 14 and it keeps going 15 16 17 18 19 20 and then it goes 21 22 23 and it keeps going like that 20 Four, and it keeps going 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and this is 30. So these are the adds, the sequence number of each byte that we have in the memory. We call it uh, the address of the of the uh, of something that you put in there. So essentially, when you say integer a uh, at line nine, based on the alignment that we understood, it aligns itself to the address and it sits at the address that is coefficient of of four so essentially this becomes integer a for us now when I say pointer p pointers are essentially integers absolutely no difference so when you say pointer p you are a set that you are creating a an integer somewhere and that integer is called p now when you say p is set to address of a whatever if i have whatever i have in a it doesn't matter so if i have something let's say the a over here is i don't know um, one two three if that's the value of a then i will have one two three in here but when i say p is set to address of a essentially the address of a that is 20 will go in here therefore P 
key points to the address of A in memory. So because of this fact, when I actually say, when I actually say target of P, target of P is set to 400, then what's going to happen over here will be will be this. So target of P, P is pointing to 20. So target of P being 400, which means P is pointing to address 20. It comes to address 20. And therefore, um, I had something in here. Hmm. Yeah, uh, becomes, uh, becomes Sorry for that. 400. Give me two seconds. And this becomes yeah. 400 here. Yes, you were saying. Um, some people are asking you if you're recording the session. The session is being recorded, uh, and I'm going to uh, resume recording on Big Blue Button 2. It is being recorded on... Uh, 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 oh, so that's the reason. Give me a second. Thank you. No Why some people don't use the microphone? You keep telling me over there. Okay. <laughs> use the microphone. I don't want to interrupt you. Hi. I didn't want to interrupt you. Okay. That's why I wrote. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. So, as I was mentioning, when target of P is 400, target of P is 400, then essentially this thing will be over here overwritten by... 400 because we just asked for it. We just said that target of P is 400. Oh, that's a little too big. 400, so this becomes 400. Okay? Now, there's no problem with this. We understand how it works from IPC144, but if I wanted to actually create this, it wouldn't have been a good design. Why? Because I want to be able to tell to the compiler to go to the next integer in memory. If I want to do that with the information I have over here, compiler has no information. It just knows P is an address. As a matter of fact, the target of P would have failed in here. Why? Because why it would have failed? Because it would say, okay, you're saying target of P. I don't know what is sitting at the destination of P you know it's 400 you never gave me that you know it's an integer but you never gave me that information you told me pointer p and then you put an address in p i have no idea what is this address you have to tell me what this address is pointing to so when you say p plus one i can go to address 24 which is the next integer so it's always so because of that they started saying okay we cannot just create a pointer in C language because we actually want to go to that address with the uh, we want to go to that address with the uh, with the pointer so we have to actually say integer pointer p and then everything's going to be okay so I, I, I can actually say over here C out uh, again I can say target of p target of P and also I can say A is the same give me a second same as as and I'm gonna put over here A and when I run this program give me two seconds please when I run this program it actually goes through it step by step if it actually compiles and runs there you go oh here it is Somebody's making a call, please stop it. Okay. <laughs> All right. So essentially when I'm when I do like this, so it actually makes that let me bring it to left. Bring this one to right. Mute yourself, please. And then you come over here. So A becomes one, two, three. 
then integer pointer p. Now p is a pointer to an integer becomes the address of a. Therefore, a p will actually hold the address of a, which is 122. And this hexadecimal value that you see is address of a. Then I'm going to say target of p is 400. Therefore, that a that was 123, target of p is 400. It goes to that address, and actually a becomes 400. And if I say c out target of p, then it's going to say 400 is the same as 400. Are we okay with this? Anybody have any question? Uh, further. Yes. So when you say target of P equal to 400, it's going to look for uh, the value of 400? No, it's not going to look for value of 400. It's going to see what's inside P. Inside P, you have 20. Target of 20, it, it's not actually 20. The address is actually... What is the address? The address is, I can't even read my own handwriting. It's 2,159,610. That's 620, essentially. So I was mentioning that this is the, uh, the address that sits inside is too big. Therefore, I'm not writing the whole thing. So P is holding this address in it. So P actually inside P you have the address because I was writing this at being the address of this location so when I say 20 this 20 is, is this 20 that you see is actually 215962 sorry that's 5 undo 20 I just write the 2 because it's easy so P has the address of A that is that address in here. So when I say target of P, essentially it looks inside P, there is an address. It jumps to that address, sees what is at the target. How does it know what is the target? It's when you actually mentioned what type of a pointer you are creating. So integer pointer P is like that. Now if I want to have a double pointer at the target, it's going to be a double, not an integer anymore. Are we okay with this? So, you have the 400 stored on another address, and you're just saying Not that another address, the address that is held in P. That's why I'm saying target of P, not P itself. Don't, you are giving pointer the extra credit that I told you not to. Oh. P is a variable, isn't it? Right? Uh, P is a pointer, yeah. No, 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 P is a variable, it's not a pointer. P is an integer variable. It's an unsigned integer variable. Uh, okay. Then you are saying put the address of A into P. So P as an integer will hold an integer number. What is that integer number? That integer number is 2,159,620. So P uh. is holding that value inside. When I say target of P is equal to, if I didn't put target of, then P will hold 400 as if you are putting an integer in there. It doesn't make any difference. But when I say target of P, I'm going to say, look at P inside, see what you have that address, go to that address, at the target of that address sitting, is sitting an integer. Deal with that instead. So it looks, it look for the, for the value of 400 and store the, it the address. Look, it doesn't look for the value of 400. It looks for the value 20 inside P, finds out where 20 in memory is, puts the 400 in there. Okay, and a, an envelope that you hold in your hand, okay? Mm -hmm. The envelope is P. Okay. The address to write an envelope, 952, I don't know, Queen Street. Okay. That address is that big number that I told you. So when you say P is a call to address of A, it actually goes where C is, where C lives, in, where A lives in memory. It takes that address, 32 Young Street, puts it on the envelope. Okay. Okay? Now you show the envelope to someone, say, you see this P, okay, this address, go to this address, deliver a pizza over there. Pizza is not going to go on the envelope. Pizza goes to the address that you have on the envelope. Uh, okay. It goes to the address that P is pointing to. I put the pizza in the hand of in hand of you because you're not allowed to go outside giving people COVID-19, right? 
<laughs> okay. All right. So, uh, are we okay with this? Do we understand this? Yeah. All right. Yeah, sir. Excuse me. Go ahead. Uh, so, does P has its own address? Of course it does. Right. Of course. And Beautiful. Now, let, let's actually yeah. say what you're saying. P has it. Again, don't give P extra credit. It's just another variable. No difference whatsoever. Let me stop this. Let me stop this and, and kind of tell you what happens now. And I'm going to uh, clear this so we can actually see what we are dealing with in here. Okay, so I want to I want to hold P. I want to hold P's address. I have to say, what is the type of P? Can you tell me? Don't mute your microphone. Come me and you are talking. Uh, it's integer. No. What is the type of P? Uh, unsigned integer. No. What is the type of P based on line ten? Read it for me. Oh, pointer. No. What is the type of P? Read An it. Integer pointer. Thank you. Type of P is integer pointer, correct? Yeah. Uh-huh. When you wanted to make a pointer to an integer, what did you write? You wrote, you had int as type. Type of A is int, correct? Yeah. You wanted to create a pointer to int, you wrote integer pointer, correct? Yeah. Now your type is integer pointer, right? So if I want to hold that address, I have to say integer pointer, that's my type, pointer. That's for the next one. Q. Now this Q holds the address of P. Yes. Right? Yeah. Address of P. Now, now, now Q is holding address of P, correct? So yeah. now let's actually, it's, it's kind of nuts. Now let's actually do it. So this is A. I'm not going to write the memory anymore. So this is A, right? This mm -hmm. is, this is P. That points to A, correct? And this is Q pointing to P, correct? Yeah. If you want to go to A, sorry, if you want to go to A, you have to say target of P, correct? Now, if you want to go to A from Q, you have to say target of target of P to go twice further. Therefore, if I want to put a value inside A using the... Now you have to mute yourself because behind the scene are talking too loud. Okay. Now, now, if you actually want to put a value inside A using Q, you have to actually say target of. Target of Q is set to 900 now. And then now you can say C out, A, and L. And what happens over here, the first target of goes from Q to P, the second target of goes from Q to A, and therefore you're going to have 900 in there. And if I run this beautiful program of mine, you will see that the output will be actually 900. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Now, if you want to make it nuts, I can actually say integer pointer. Where is it? Pointer, pointer, pointer R holds the address of Q. Oh, sorry. Address of Q. So I'm actually adding one more thing. And if I want to do that, then it's got to be target of, target of, target of. So now if I want to add one more, if I want to actually access A from R, now I have to add another target of over here. Target of over here, R, and set that one to 2000. So now the third one is over there. And if I actually want to access that, then I have this one. I think we already talked about this in class a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. So this becomes target of, target of, target of, R. So it goes target of, target of, target of, so we get to A. Right. And if I run this not crazy program of mine,
then you'll see that the, the, the result is going to be exactly the same and it's going to have 2000 here now for A. Any problem with this? Further, what's the difference between integer pointer and integer star? What is the, the difference with it? This is the difference with it. <laughs> because I want you to actually mention it, I put a define statement. There is no pointer. I just def define them. Ah, uh, okay. That's, <laughs> so, uh, and, and just because of that, I hit it over here so you don't see it. <laughs> Include PTR. That's it. So, essentially, the correct version of writing this, but that's why I always meant, tell you to always say it the way it is. Don't read don't say integer star integer star doesn't tell you anything integer pointer tells you what p is address of tells you what you are and this is ampersand if you look at the address of is replaced with an ampersand and that's what it is and the reason that i put pointer and target of is that the the both i wanted to use a curse word over here both are asterisk that's why it, it kind of um uh, f makes people confused. When I use pointer here and target of here, nobody's confused because they're two different things. Yeah, it actually makes it easier to understand. Yeah, that makes it easier to understand. But if I wanted to write this code actually, so let me save this. Alt F A, I'm going to say over here uh, 0 01 pointer, 0 01 pointer, dot pointer with define dot cpp so that's that one now if i actually want to write it the way i want to write it the, the way we should actually write it is not to have this thing over here and now that rule that i mentioned uh, i actually put that rule over there that i that i that i that i mentioned this is this is all review of ipc 144 and i say how do we recognize an asterisk so when the asterisk comes after after type it means pointer Okay, when asterisk comes before a pointer variable, that means target of. All right, and if asterisk comes between two variables, <laughs> two variables, you know that that's multiplication. <laughs> Variables, variables. That means a mul. That means multiplication. Okay, so that's what asterisk is. And ampersand means address of. So now, if I actually want to write this properly, like properly, first let me clear the screen. So I have to say integer, integer integer pointer p is set to address of a then integer pointer pointer now you see there are two asterisks over there so you have to that this means it and this becomes address of p and because p is already a pointer this becomes address of a pointer and therefore two asterisks for it and if i say integer pointer 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 r that essentially becomes address of q because q is already a double pointer getting an address of it the ampersand requires that one then this is the part that actually causes trouble target of p is 100 400 target of p is printed over here then i'm going to say target of target of q becomes 900 and target of target of R becomes 200 and that's what it is and that's what like scared the bejesus out of everyone but that's what essentially what it is if you mention it how what it actually means then it's easy to understand and grasp uh, anybody have any problem with this questions suggestions what is the difference between pointer and integer point? Oh, okay. So you asked the question already, so we know what it is. It just, it just, uh, it's just a defined statement. There is no, 
for those who still didn't get it, there is no such thing as pointer in C++ language. There is no keyword called target of in C++ language. I just made it up to make it easier. That's all. And all. And there is no other thing about it. Any questions? All right. Strings. What are strings? Strings are essentially, uh, we said null term is an array of characters. So I'm not going to say what strings are. I'm going to say what arrays are. Arrays are essentially a piece of memory pointed by uh, a pointer. Uh, and that's that's all about it. There's nothing else. So if you have integer 5, a 5 essentially set to, I don't know, 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60. If you have something like this, what you really have in memory is uh, something like this. So if assuming each cell that I'm drawing over here is an integer, if I have something like this, so this is my memory, if I have it like this, then A becomes a pointer, is a pointer somewhere, that's A, and you have five integers allocated somewhere, one, two, three, four, five, and A is pointing to it, and there is nothing metaphorical in here. This is exactly what it is. No difference. So in here I'm going to have and in here I'm going to have 20, 30, 40, 50 and 60. Okay? That's what it is. Not no no hidden agenda, no magical thingy happening anywhere. Essentially uh, I can simply say um, target of uh, uh, print uh, sorry uh, see out uh, target of A, and because A is pointing to the first element, then what I'm going to see over here will be essentially the first element that is 20. If I, if I say C out uh, target of A plus 2, I'm essentially saying address of A that is an integer, go two integers further, and then print whatever you are printing. So now if I actually print this, you will see that the value will be 20 and 40, so it jumped two further. Uh, and that is that is exactly what C does. So when you actually, actually when you are writing A0, what you are actually writing is the same as, so, so your, your A0 is the same as the same as target of a plus zero. Absolutely no difference. These two, this is exactly, again, what, I, what I'm writing over here, there is no, uh, I'm not trying to be like the, the last time that writes something to, to tell you, to teach you something. That's what it is. And that's called uh, pointer arithmetic. Yes. Just for curiosity, so that's the reason why the first uh, element is always zero? That's exactly what it is. Thank you very much. That's why C languages index always start from zero, because that zero is being added to the address of the pointer, and therefore it becomes the first one. That's all. There is no, again, hidden agenda around it. Okay, okay thank you. And because you can actually write something like this, I can actually write character name, I don't know, 50 is set to far that, right? I write something like this. So this, this statement that you see is equivalent to this one. If I had over here 50, these two are the same. This means set the first element to F, second one to A, Oh, sorry, when I say A, ASCII code of A, R, D, A, D, and when you don't have complete initialization, the rest becomes zero. It's the same thing over here. So when I say integer A5 is set to these values, the fifth element will be 60, other 45 will be all zero. So in here, if I say C out target of A, I don't know, plus 20, what I will be getting 
will not be garbage because I initialized it and if you don't complete your initialization the rest becomes zero that's why always in C language in C in I in IPC they would say if you want to initialize a very uh, an array to <clears throat> to uh, an integer array to to zero this is how you do it it's not that you that means everything is zero it sets the first one to zero and because the rest is not initialized they all become zero they all become null now having said that it means this is essentially a character pointer too because we are setting the name to it therefore I would be able to write something like this I can actually write for integer i set to 0 and i less than 6 and i plus plus I can actually write like this far that I'll see out or to make it nicer character ch I can say ch is set to far dot i at left side I have a pointer at right side I have an index when I say zero it means zero of far that in memory the first address is this one and then the second address in this one and now I can see out them and what I'm gonna have over here will be essentially <clears throat> is it uh, uh, you wrote card instead of card. oh thank you stupid compiler uh, see ya. <laughs> okay there you go so you run it and you see far that is coming out like that okay so that's what a string is string essentially means put some characters put some integers in in the small characters and end the data with zero and that's what it does no hidden no trick behind it C language is very simple it's like they, they build all their concepts over very simple uh, syntax that it's that it goes through. Any questions down to here? And that is why they always say, "Don't do this. Don't do something like character pointer a is equal to Joe." Why? Because then you you by saying this, you're actually now nowadays the compilers actually prevent you to do that. But you could do it in old times, because uh, it, probably if I do const over here, it's going to be okay with it. Let me see. Yeah, you see? So in old times, it wouldn't do that. So when you did this, you actually created a regular pointer to a literal value in memory that is defined to be constant. So they say, don't do this. Nowadays, it gives you an error, but in old days, you could actually do it. But if I do constant A, Joe, this is identical to character B, Joe. When I do something like this, so when you create an array, the name of the array is always a constant character pointer because you don't want, they don't want you to lose where your array is. So line number 12 and line number 13 is potatoes and potatoes. Exactly the same. All right. Anything else on this before we continue? I want to go through these things very quickly, be done with it, so we can actually go back to the other one. Okay, think about questions that you have. I'm going to just take a look at the topics, make sure that I've covered everything. <coughs> and I'm going to mute myself and clear my throat. Just two seconds. You are now muted. <coughs> You are now unmuted. All right, it would be nice to actually have a. Anyways, uh, soon I'm I'm gonna put a break and we're gonna go for a, a cup of water or something. Uh, pointer to a literal string. We talked about that. Operation. Arithmetic operations. You kind of saw what the arithmetic operations that I've done, so you know exactly what this means. Um, anytime you're adding one to a uh, to a pointer the size of the target will be added to it. So let me just put this thing over here. Save this as 02 pointers.cpp. 
Ah, by the way, this is nothing C, the CPB, except from C out, this is just C. I'm not teaching anything new. These are all good old C, old-fashioned C language. There is nothing new about this. This is not C++, whatever. This is just C. Okay, <clears throat> um, so uh, what I'm saying is that if I have something like this, if I write integer pointer P is equal to 400, okay of course I'm gonna cast that so it doesn't nag integer pointer 400 okay so essentially I am manually setting P to be 400 it's not pointing to anything it has only value 400 to it so if I go C out P let's see if it's gonna show us in hexadecimal or it's gonna show in so it's showing 190 let's actually uh, <coughs> convert it uh, to an integer so it can actually print it as a so I'm going to say int or uh, unsigned. Let me see if it's going to print it as, as number now. Yeah, so it's 400. I didn't do, it, there's nothing, so it. you shouldn't be impressed by this. It's just integer P. I put 400 in and I printed that 4. So if I say over here integer Q, Q is 400. And I say C out, and if I say C out, Q, and L, these two are identical. I did not do anything, people. They are identical. Does anybody have any confusion about this before I go to the next step? All right. So uh, you're creating a pointer, but you're assigning a value. To the, to the variable yeah, instead of what, what is inside the pointer doesn't have any magical being in it the value inside the pointer is an integer number anyway that happens to be address of a, of, of a place so in here I'm just making it so if I actually say target of P is equal to something I'm gonna crash this program because I'm writing in 400th address in memory somewhere that doesn't belong to me got it so 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 you're casting 400 to uh, integer pointer yeah because to be able to save it but it's still an integer it is it is a 400 the, if if i was doing this 10 years ago you wouldn't see even a warning over there they are making it safer so you know what you're doing if i was doing 10 years ago i wouldn't have to cast anything to anything 400 was a very valid number for an address it still it is but they want to you to confirm that you are not doing something cuckoo <laughs> that's all they want you they want you to acknowledge that I'm not I know what I'm doing this is not just a, an integer it's an address that I want to put in there but the, the point that I want to make is that pointer is nothing an address is nothing but a regular integer number as you see they work exactly the same way I just printed it out for you yeah but the 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 program understand it as an address uh, one more time so the the program understand the compiler understand the 400 as an address yes of course because it is an inner pointer and pointer's job is to hold an address oh, okay uh, do we understand am i talking too loud by the way oh no, it's okay okay uh, just because because when i get excited i shout and mm, i don't want to have people go deaf on me so we're, we're good right so the, the, somebody has asked can you explain ch equal for that i somebody asked oh, me to see wow that was a blast from the past let me <laughs> uh but let, let's go back in here okay F for that when you write a literal value that literal va so that literal value you're putting it inside and name 50 so when if I if I wrote over here name I nobody would have objected because name is the address of the beginning of Fardat and then I would print every single one and I'm, I'll be done with it I just proved it to you that a literal value is merely an is merely an address of a place in memory a literal value a literal string value is a is an address of a place in memory in which you have those characters that was the message i was giving it to you so because 
if I put it beside the index it works it means this is somewhere in memory which I am accessing uh, Shafan is that is that understandable is that okay all right good so let's go back to where we were in here so the point I wanted to make was this I'm gonna say over here P plus plus then I'm gonna say Q plus plus then I'm gonna have the exact same value exact same printouts again so it is the same thing the only thing I did I added one to each of them and if you look at it that's the difference between a pointer and a regular integer a pointer when you do arithmetic with it when you add one to it it adds the size of the target to itself so it becomes the address of the next thing it's pointing to regular integer you add one to it a unit one will be added to it are we okay with this anybody have any okay uh, now this is one of those times that I that I want to actually uh, see people responding uh, how many people understood what I just uh, the point that I made give me a thumb up please I, I need to know oh where, oh, one percent. Oh, that was Tom. That, <laughs> so changed his mind. <clears throat> All right, and the rest probably just uh, enjoying their life. They're gonna, they're just here um, to 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 say that we are here. All right, so <clears throat> that's that. So that's pointer arithmetic. But if we want to uh, um, go through it and, and see exactly how things work. Um, why do we need to do stuff why do we need why do we need four to be added to the target when we are dealing with something like this the reason is that you want to be able to use a pointer to traverse to go through uh, things in memory and if you want to do that the only way they could do it was to to do what you see right now so if I really for example had an uh, uh, um, series of integers uh, that we had in the previous one let me just copy that so if I had series of integers in the memory like this okay now in here I can actually say Q uh, P is sorry P is set to a which means P will point where a is pointing that is uh, there's no mystery behind this so when I when I when I have a set to that so these are the 50 things that I have and this is a pointing to this to the beginning of this 50 integers over here so essentially these are the 50 integers if that's the case then having P be equal to Q is that I have a standalone func uh, standalone uh, uh, variable over here called P and I'm gonna make it point to exactly where a was pointing so a is pointing where P is pointing essentially <clears throat> it means because they are all, both addresses of a piece of memory they they can interact exactly like each other so I can say C out target of target of a and I can say uh, P0 so you can always treat a pointer as an array or an array as a pointer because they are essentially the same thing and you run it you will see that the outcome is both 20 for both of them no difference having said that if I want to actually go through every single thing inside a what I can do is this I can say for <clears throat> I'm not gonna I already have P is equal a over there I'm gonna say while P is actually let's do a do while so I'm gonna say do in here I'm gonna say C out um, target of P and then I'm gonna say P plus plus and in here I'm gonna say while P is not equal to 
address of a5. So essentially I'm saying if p is not pointing to 5, keep adding and keep going. As soon as it is, you stop. So if I if I run this program, you will see that it's going to actually print every single element inside the, the A and stop because it keeps pointing to the next one and it keeps going. So first it pointed at to the first one at line 13. At line 13 it pointed to the first one. Then at line <clears throat> at line 16, uh, 16 it printed it. As soon as it adds one, it goes one further. Then it goes one further. Then it goes one further. Then it goes one further and it says, oh, I am at the address is the same as the address of A5. And then it's going to stop right over there. And that's pointer arithmetic to go through things through pointers and so on and so forth. Any questions down to here? Suggestions? Objections? All right, so I keep uh, adding examples as, as we are going through. So this is zero three pointers. You can do lots of cool stuff that it won't allow you to do anymore. Like I, I never used string copy. My string copy all my life was this. So. If you ever had two font, two things, so character, uh, um, <clears throat> uh, string, so let's say source, uh, and I'm going to put over here, uh, say, um, I don't know, Fred, and I have character destination, and in here, whatever, I'm going to put 50. And if I wanted to copy, you do SDR copy into destination, and source, right? So that's how it copies. But if I want to write a string copy, I would do this. So I would actually say void uh, str copy, and I'm going to have over here that the, the destination is a character pointer destination and constant character pointer source. And instead of writing all those things you can simply say while target of destination plus plus is equal to target of source plus plus this is this was very usual thing to do to copy one string to another um, <clears throat> for this we need to understand this and this one okay uh, first of all um, uh, the when the when you uh, when you are putting an asterisk, plus plus is much stronger than asterisk. So what happens is that this happens by itself, and this happens by itself. It's the plus plus is not going to add to this, and pointer doesn't mean that. They both separately act on the variable. Therefore, one is going to get to get the copy to another, and then it's going to, after the copying is done, because it's a postfix operation, it's going to add one to the address. Comes back over here, copies, and it keeps going. And because the values that are getting copied over here are F, R, D, none of them is zero. So it won't stop. But as soon as it gets to the end, as soon as the zero is copied from source to destination, while loop goes false, and therefore the destination becomes uh, the same thing as source. So now I can actually say destination source and have my own string copy written. But I believe, I don't know if it's going to give me an error over here, um, but I, I, I think if you do this on matrix, it won't let you. <clears throat> they don't let you do this anymore because doing this was the reason. There you go. It just copied. No warning whatsoever. If I move this to matrix now, then... Um, uh, on new G++ on matrix G++ this will not be allowed without a warning a warning or even it won't let you compile so careful about it um, so but if you have a zero uh, on the string it won't work right my dear zeros ASCII code is what 
Let's see, uh, shame. an address, shame, for instance. Shame, shame, shame. <laughs> what is this? Tell me. That's not zero. That's 48. Oh. Okay. <laughs> it's not, no. <laughs> that's the ASCII code of zero. I got you over there. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's the ASCII code of zero. Uh, but when we say it's zero, we, mean, we essentially means it's null. It's all bits are set to zero. That's what, uh, that's what we do. But thank okay. you for the question. That was a good question. So so I could do this. Let me just write it, write it down just to make sure everybody understands. That will copy just fine. No problem with it. Because there are zero characters, each of them is 48, not zero. Okay? Any other question? Okay. Thank you. Well, beautiful question. Thanks. Any other question on this? And then we have the same thing that we have over here that Chris actually put on his notes. Oh, here's my lovely wife with a cup of tea because I'm losing my voice. Thank you. All right, so this is one of the good things about teaching from home. I just muted and I asked, please, can I have a cup of tea? And it came through the door. That never happens when you're teaching at school. Anyways, so, uh, yeah, so, uh, and uh, doing what, uh, like, just take, take, a, take a look at what Chris have done for SDR length over there. This is the example for SDR length, as you see. <clears throat> so, it works the same way, no difference. It, it's using the same concept. It goes one by one until it comes zero and adds to the length as it goes through. Cryptic code. <clears throat> um, uh, when I was a young boy, <laughs> These type of things were kind of in fashion. So we actually, we would sit over there, write a piece of code that would work perfectly and nobody would understand how it's actually working perfectly. And we would take proud, pride of it. Proud of it, we would actually be proud to do something like that. Today you do that, they throw you out in two seconds and they won't give you a job because this code is not maintainable. The next person who wants to come and debug your code is going to get really confused and that's not what we want in business these days. Are we okay? Uh, is this uh, style more efficient? No. No, compiler compiles everything. It may be like, it, mm, let me just see. Uh, mm, no, when I think, you can, what you can do, you can always look at the assembly code for it to see if, like write the SDR copy in two different ways to see if it got, got bigger or not. With the speeds of the computers that we have, I don't think, it is much more efficient. Uh, yeah, like the, the, whole, the, the whole thing, is like if you write an if statement in there and stop the while with an if statement, then yes, that's a jump or something like that. But if it's just assignment happening, so what I mean is that uh, essentially if I had uh, just a value of, if I had something like this, if I had while uh, uh, destination not equal to zero having something like that and then then put over here uh, destination uh, target destination will be set to source then the destination plus plus source plus plus and then after here wrote destination set to zero to null term so essentially line number five to to ten is what's happening in four okay this is not like if you get hired at some place to that actually write c programs this is very usual between people who actually write this is not cryptic but writing something like this compiler would make it as efficient as that one it's not that much of a difference okay um Compilers are very smart these days. Okay. Uh, um, another thing is, uh, like, if I wanted to, like, uh, actually um, make a pointer in a... Uh, let me give you an example for it. How can I explain that? Um, give me a second.
if I want to advance a pointer to go further so let's put it like this um, if I say over here void find x so I have a function called void find find oh let me actually save this let me save this let me save this see out sorry uh, length of source make sure it compiles then I'm gonna uh, put a new one and then we'll go after that so alt f alt f a uh, four pointers but now when we go to C++ you'll see you're gonna do some amazing stuff with these pointers that becomes very exciting um, and now we are just going through concept these are pretty cool things too but these are the things that we should go to in, in IPC 144 not in, in here but anyway so say so let's say I have a function function over here void find X so I want to find X in a string so and this is my string over here and somewhere in here I have an X and I want to find out where the X is um, and I want a pointer to point to it so I have over here character pointer XPTR okay and I want this pointer to point to this X so when I print it and I'll go see out target of XPTR I want X to get printed in here now if I told you write a function that receives this oh sorry 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 write a function that receives a source and the pointer over here and finds X and sets the XPTR to the to the address what would you do first of all you would say why this thing is returning oh yeah what would I pass to this thing so I will pass source that I want to find X in it correct or let's call it find care let's generalize it find care and this one's gonna be chpdr and so I'm gonna say source in here I'm gonna pass the pointer I'm gonna write it later and in here I'm gonna pass the character X so I'm looking for character X in here so source is a constant character pointer I don't need to worry about it <clears throat> and the X is simply a character CH but what would I put over here can I put over here character pointer uh, PTR let's do it and see what happens huh so I want to set it so what I will do in here I'm gonna say um, um, while source target of source I'm not gonna write it cryptic so while target of source is not null then I'm gonna say if uh, uh, PTR uh, and in here while that one I'm gonna say um, a boolean done is false while not done again I don't want to write crypto code I want to write it more the most understandable way if possible so I know you can write it in one line I don't want to so what it's not done and the source is not null if the target of source is the same as CH I want PTR to be point pointing to S the source which means point to the same place that thing is and now <clears throat> at the end of it and I'm gonna say done is one done is one done is uh, true and we are getting an error over here because that's a constant this is not so I'm gonna make this a constant too <clears throat> which means I don't want to change it I just want to have address of it I want to get where is the address for it so that's that one so it's got to be set and I'm gonna over here uh, and I'll be done right so this is my search to find out if it is or not if it's there or not otherwise it won't set the pointer to anything so if I do this did I write us right thing so if I say over here find care and I put over here source chptr and over here put character X do you think this is going to work and that chptr is going to actually print uh, a value for me 
I'm not getting any error, correct? If I actually run this step by step, builders, come on, what builder? Uninitialize, okay, sure. I'm going to set it to null PTR. And let's go now, okay? Um, and let's have this over here. And have this guy over here. And so we can actually see what we are doing. So it comes up over here, it comes in over here, it sets that one, sets it, and then comes over here. So this is null, obviously, and this is whole, uh, uh, it's that for that thingy, uh, Fred thingy. So it's going to check, it's not null. Is it, if, is, is this, that is F equal to CH that is, that is X, it's not. So it's going to jump through it. I forgot to add to <laughs> source, source plus plus. So let's <laughs> do it again. I forgot to actually advance the pointer. So <clears throat> I'm going to uh, run right down, right down to here. So one more time. <clears throat> so it adds one to source and now it goes, checks the next one. And the next one is now R. It keeps going. It keeps going, keeps going, keeps going, keeps going, and it keeps going until that becomes X. And this becomes X, so the address where X is pointing to, now PTR is pointing to. Correct? We're all good down to this point. So we're going to come, end the program, and get out. What is this? No. What the heck? Can anybody tell me why that didn't change and still no? So if I actually print this one, I'm going to crash the thing. Boom. Because it's not a reference? It's not a reference. It's not a pointer. So if I wanted to do that, I have to, I have to pass the address of the variable. Because, I, I, again, I thought I gave what students do, giving a pointer extra credit. If I want something changed, I have to pass its address. So this has to be pointer pointer PTR and therefore target of PTR will be set to source. Now I am doing business. Now it comes in here and if I, if I actually go through it, I'll get builders, why? Uh, constant character. Are you serious? Okay. Type safety. <laughs> yeah, so now if I actually do it, go over here, you'll see that it, it, it keeps going and now it actually prints X so it actually pointing to X and we're good so that's one thing but we can now that we are this is C language what you just see is C okay so again this is another one so I'm gonna say pointer to pointer pointer and it's gonna be five pointer to pointer But what we can do now in C++ is something pretty cool and th 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 we usually forget when we are dealing with very, with, with pointers. The, the advice that I gave you, pointers are nothing but variables. If I have a pointer like this, I can simply pass a reference. It's a reference to a pointer and problem solved. So essentially, PTR becomes a new name for the CHPTR that I have over here. It's a reference to a pointer with absolutely no problem, and the outcome is exactly like what I had before. Do we understand it, what a reference to a pointer is? Anybody have any question? Uh, for the... Yes. Uh, why, why did you make it... Uh constant why did I make it constant because I yeah, had there. constant up there and because I had const because this was constant it was telling me hey you cannot m cast the con if I then I had to do a inter reinterpret cast not reinterpret uh, what is the other one constant cast then I had to have a constant cast to cast it out of constantness I have a constant pointer I want to find the address if I to return that back I need a constant pointer to put it in but, but when you make it constant, you shouldn't be able to change it, right? Change the target, not the variable. Ah, okay. Change the target. Ooh, careful. 
we have we have different like if I wrote if I created the if I created the constant like this constant character pointer const ABC now I have a pointer that is const at the target <clears throat> so I can if I say source over here it means ABC can only point to source and nowhere else but the second constantness doesn't exist did I answer the question yeah all right thank you all right uh, someone else in line are we okay I just like wanted to ask could you explain one more time point your reference because this looks strange for me it, uh, if I had this was it strange for you I know it, no. that point there we go again Jebek don't give pointers extra credit this thing that you have over here is just a pointer pointer reference me you are getting the re although it's written in three <clears throat> syllables but these three things there it's one thing it's a constant character pointer type it's just the mm -hmm. fancy name it's just integer double employee car constant character pointer they're all the same types are we mm -hmm. good mm -hmm. okay anyone else Are we good? All right. So we have till 315. Okay. I want to pour that tea is because I'm losing my voice. Five minutes break. Don't go. Come back immediately after five minutes because your life depends on it. Okay. This one is an important thing and it's going to be a question, definite question on, uh, on, uh, tell me, on, um, uh, assessment test okay all right five minutes break we're gonna be back at 250 have a beautiful day I'll see you in five minutes and please remind me to continue recording when I come back you are now muted thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you and thank you all right so what is the major problem with pointers people major problem this is just an employee that we have so I just put the employee you've already seen this I'm just gonna minimize it so it's a, a class that I'm gonna use for the examples later on but what is a major problem that we have with pointers major problem that we have with pointers is that you forget deleting and you're gonna have memory leak that's our problem we can fix this problem with the knowledge we have how can we fix it? I can actually make that. So what is the difference between an object and a, and a primitive value? An object has properties, can make decisions, do stuff based on, uh, do stuff differently based on lifetime and things like that. So essentially, objects are smart versions of primitive values. So. Uh, only the last uh, milestone is marked, not the, the, the first two. It's, there is no deadline, Schmidt line. It, uh, the last one is the one that is uh, marked, and MS2 essentially is, um, uh, if, if you're, because I see, I, I think deadline was MS2 was yesterday, if somebody's replying to someone else. Uh, the final, the last uh, milestone is always the important one. Okay, anyway, so what I was saying is that, I was saying is that it is uh, we can actually uh, fix this problem so let's create a class and I'm gonna call that class say UPTR okay so UPTR is a class for me that is going to be a, a pointer that is unique and uh, it cannot leak it cannot uh, uh, cause uh, Assertion failure. What was you remember what assertion failure is, right? When you have two pointers pointing to the same piece of memory, you delete one and then the other wants to delete it and it goes down the drain. We don't want that. So what I want to do over here is to make something so pointers delete their own memories. How do I do that? I'm gonna say okay, I wanna simulate a pointer. So First of all, I want it to be pointer to anything. So let's make it a template. So it's a template. 
and uh, <clears throat> uh, let's call it type is too long I'm going to put T over here T okay then I'm going to say okay T pointer that's the pointer that I want to manage and make sure that it's not going to screw things up and it's MPTR whatever that I'm going to point to and I'm going to set it to null pointer when I just start my class so that's that clear straightforward no problem now when I want this thing to get created I want to uh, essentially set the value to whatever it is um, over there but I want to make sure that uh, it only happens when it is being set and it's not assigned to another object at the moment of creation like a copy constructor or something like that so the constructor that I am going to create is going to be an explicit one so I'm going to create an explicit constructor for this and in here I'm going to mention that uh, uh, okay UPTR and uh, T pointer PTR that's the pointer that I have and I'm going to set that MPTR to point to this so it's a very simple and straightforward thing and I'm not going to do anything in here that's it anybody have any problem down to here I'm just encapsulating a pointer that's all and then what I'm going to do I'm going to say when this object is going out of scope when this pointer of mine is going out of scope if it's pointing to something wipe it out so essentially I'm gonna I'm gonna create UPTR the destructor for it and I'm gonna say in the destructor delete MPTR right away you understand what I just did I created a pointer encapsulated inside the class so when I if I create an instance of this class and set it to address of a type when the pointer goes out of scope it's going to delete whatever it's pointing um, why did you use explicit for the constructor because I didn't want stuff like this happen I didn't want to I didn't um, um, okay if I have an employee let's let's put it this way if I have an employee that is a constructor if I have an employee that has a constructor that accepts an employee number right I can do something like this I can say employee I can actually write over here um, employee e then I can say e e is set to one two three four five six what it does it says at left I have employee at right I have an integer that is an employee number so I'm gonna create a temporary nameless employee out of this and set it to that one so essentially it automatically cat upcast this one to an employee and said it I want to say no I don't want this don't do that I want to explicitly create it if I want to I don't want you to create something out of the blue I don't want temporary instances of this to get created if they, if I let that be then it's gonna get created and destroyed and removes my object without me knowing it got it Yes, All thank right. you. You're welcome. So, uh, sorry, uh, can you explain it again? I didn't get it. Okay, if I, <clears throat> this is a template, right? So if I say over, let me just create a main. If I say over here, look, do I have, what, what is this employee's thing? So let me see. Oh, it doesn't have son of a gun. It doesn't have a, it doesn't have a uh, one one argument constructor so that u pointer that I have over there if I say u ptr int okay and I create over here uh, uh, a right and in here I have integer uh, a and I'm gonna say over here it's equal to I'm gonna say new int okay now when this a goes out of scope when this a goes out of scope it's going to uh, uh, delete that integer correct correct the one who asked question are, are you yeah. okay? 
it does right what happens if I do this <clears throat> it's gonna create a temporary nameless set the value <clears throat> and do a copy over here correct a blind copy over here Mm -hmm. I don't want that to happen. I want it to be explicit. I want only this type of creation to be allowed. Got it? Okay. That's explicit. Okay, so, <clears throat> all right, so that's that. So, this, we want to do this. So, uh, we created this. The next thing I want to do, I want to make sure that no copying or assigning is possible because that's the source of all, all evil in, in pointers. In pointers, you two pointers point to the same thing and one deletes one gets deleted wipes out the other guy's memory and it's doomed we don't want that but I want to be able to exchange I want to be able to have one pointer give its object that is pointing to another pointer so they can pass it along to the other one so moving is okay for me if I want to I can actually move one to another which means it grabs the other guy's pointer and then sets the other one to null therefore it is impossible for one piece of memory to be pointed by two pointers they are only pointed by one pointer are we clear on this hopefully we're good then, so you're setting the, the recall operator to only work on move Yes, exactly. So oh, they, I can move. I can have one to point to another. So I can have something like this. I'm, I'm going to complete the example and you'll see exactly what I mean. Okay? I'm going to complete the example and you'll see exactly what I mean. So let me write the code over here. Let me bring the code over here so you can see actually what, what I mean by that. So this is the example that I have written. So I have a pointer of employee and I create new employee over there and an integer or whatever, okay? Now, <clears throat> I can have two pointers created. There's absolutely no problem, okay? So I can have pointer number two receive the pointer number one's object. So that new integer that is created is gonna be passed along with the from PTR to PTR2. And, but it's not going to point to another one. This is going to get nullified. This is going to point to the other one. It essentially means that you have something in your hand, you give it to someone else. When you give it to someone else, you don't have it anymore. That person has it. Okay? So, and the next thing I want to do, I want if somebody actually wants to see what is the target of something, I want to be able to actually pass the value out. Correct? So I need to pass the reference out when anyone is using the target of operator, so returning the target of MPTR. So I'm going to say, if somebody wants to see what is the target of, this is the, the target of whatever I have, and here's the reference. And in case somebody wants to point to an object, to an object with this, then I need to be able to use the arrow operator. So I have to pass the address out if I need to. If somebody uses the arrow, I need to pass the address out. So I'm going to say return the type pointer if somebody wants to use the arrow operator, which essentially means returning the address itself. So if the arrow operator is used, return the address. If the target operator is used, return the reference. Now, take a look and see what happened. Now, for example, I have the employee and I want to print his tax and I have the employee as a dynamic memory. What's going to happen to this? I'm going to have this unique pointer of mine that is called E in here and I'm going to have this unique pointer of mine over here that is P and I'm gonna have an employee it's gonna print and I'll do all the good stuff that it's supposed to do in here but when it actually passes the value to tax it moves it to tax it goes into tax tax receives it prints it 
and when it's over, when E is dying in UPTR, the destructor is called, the memory that I have allocated will get destroyed, therefore no memory leak. I don't have a delete statement anymore. I don't need to worry about my pointer to being leak, doing leak or uh, two pointers pointed to the same place. By mistake, I delete something twice. When I run this program, three years later, this is what's going to happen. Oh, I'm compiling something else. What is this? Oh, oopsie daisy, I, I, uh, I edited something wrong. Give me two seconds, let me stop this. Let me stop this for a second. Control A, copy, goes in here. Paste. Oops. There you go. So cut this one and put it over here. Save everything. Sorry, I, I, I edited the wrong file. Okay, so now let's continue. So now if I actually run this program, I will get build errors. What is that? Okay. One more time. All right, so it actually comes over here. Now it it creates a new employee. The employee is created dynamically, goes into my smart pointer and passes the address of employee to my smart pointer. So PTR over there is going to point to that one. Happens the same thing for an integer over here. So a new integer is created over here and is pointed by MPTR when it's there. When I actually say target of PTR, it goes to target and passes the reference of PTR out. Therefore, the value is printed. And what's going on? Uh, just a second. Stop. Oh, it's actually receiving a value. Sorry, it's C in. So it goes over there, it's C in. So I'm going to say over here 20 and I hit enter. Oh, and it, uh, I was doing it step by step. One more time. Sorry about that. One more time, one more time, one more time. My apologies, my apologies. Goes over here. We've done this. Anyways, it goes to target of PTR, returns the reference. So target of PTR is returned, goes to C in. C in starts getting it. I put 20 year head enter goes to the reference, so essentially the target of PTR is set to that one. If I go to that, to the uh, target of uh, uh, operator overload, it returns the reference of the target, that is 20, and 20 gets printed. So as you see, it is used exactly like you're using a pointer. Now if I move that integer to another one, what happens? It goes to my move constructor, and in move constructor, it gets the target, the address of that 20, puts it in this one, and sets the other one to null. Therefore, if the integer is passed by this pointer, given to another pointer, and that pointer is printing it now. And in main right now, I have my employee as such, as you see, that's my main. In main, I have my that employee, employee over there. Now I go to tax and I move P to tax. So it goes right up there to tax. <clears throat> a new one is getting created, passes the employee from one pointer to another. So the, so the unique pointer in employee now owns, has the ownership of the employee. And it's going to calculate the tax. So now the operator arrow is being ex uh, uh, invoked. So it goes over there, passes the address of the employee, and therefore the display is called out of it. And it shows what is the tax. And take a look. When it comes out, this E is supposed to die. Because it dies, it comes out and deletes and wipes out the employee. The employee is out. Now when we come out of here, this one is dying but it's already, oh, this one is the integer that with 20 deletes that one. The next one is not going to delete anything because it's null. 
and finally the employee is gonna employee one is gonna go and that's no so therefore no memory leak and everything's done beautifully and this is called a unique pointer now if you don't want the unique pointer you actually want to be able to to uh, uh, have two pointers to point to something then it becomes a little more complicated which means so let me just uh, save this this is uh, 07 is it 07 yeah my unique pointer dot CPP now if I want to actually do this as a pointer that can be shared between few I have to actually count how many pointers are pointing to the same thing I'm just gonna bring it up I have only five minutes I'm gonna bring it up and show it to you walk through it and explain how, how I did it go home and walk through it to see how it's done so the only difference is that this is the same employee that I had the only difference that I that this shared pointer of mine has is that it has a static integer over here that counts how many instances of, of pointer are pointing to the same thing right now everything's exactly the same but it has a copy constructor and has a copy move because it should I need to be able to copy I need to be able to have two things pointing at the same time I should be able to move around two if I want to but when I'm deleting I always check to see if this is the last instance of that pointer if it is then delete otherwise just reduce the counter by one so my destructor will not start deleting the object it will only get called when the last instance of the share pointer goes out of memory and therefore no memory leak happens it's the exact same like the other one but it becomes sloppy this is not supposed to be used um, uh, and you can of course I, I added these two to be able to uh, uh, compare two pointers to be this if they are the same or not so we can do all those things there's no problem and this is the initiation of my uh, static uh, uh, integer that is counting <clears throat> now just to show how it works this is how it works I'm just gonna walk through it and you'll see how it works and uh, then I'm gonna show you uh, uh, um, something very important so let's start it so essentially I am creating a new integer and as soon as it goes there it adds one to the counter now I know I have one instance of this pointing to the to the integer now I have another integer that is copying to that one essentially B and C are going to point to the same thing but as soon as they are pointing to the same thing it adds one to the counter and then now I create another one that is pointing to B and therefore the counter is going to be the same if I add one to the target of C it comes over here and returns the target and adds one to it and then I will move a to D so I'm creating another one but this time I'm gonna move it to the other one which means it's not gonna add one more because it's being moved and it's not needed to add anything to the to the counter so that's passed through now I'm saying if it's not equal to null pointer which means it is actually pointing to something show the value that's a that is all moved so it cannot point to anything the second one it says if it's not equal to null pointer which is not so <coughs> which is not which means it actually comes back over here and goes inside and prints it so it actually prints the value that was added plus plus over there that is 13 <clears throat> and the employee maker over here is passing the values inside this employee and over there it is going to oh I press the uh, F10 instead of F11 so uh, one more time go run to cursor so I was down to here so that one printed 13 twice now if I actually go in here it's gonna create a shared pointer to a new employee print the employee get a copy out of it and get out and as soon as it wants to get out the employee is going to do that shared employee is gonna die so it goes to his destructor and it says am I the last one no so don't delete just reduce the counter by one it goes to the next one am I the last one yes now delete the object so that single object that is being pointed by many 
is going to only get deleted once when the last one is going out of the scope. And it happens the exact same thing over here. I have a total of three pointers to integers. The first one is not going to delete. The second one is not going to delete. But when it gets to the third one, now it's the last one and the last pointer is delete. So they call this account, uh, they call this thing over here a reference counter. Now, my news is for you is that this is all done in C++. It's in the STL library. So if you actually go to the STL, li uh, to, the, to the notes in the uh, raw pointers and unique pointers, you will see that smart pointers. They actually call these smart pointers. Uh, it's a cool name, but uh, it's nothing extraordinary. It's just a nice technique that they have used. So if you actually come over here, you'll see it is called, it is called, where is it? Unique pointer, see? Unique PTR. Literally, it's called unique PTR, and then you put it that way. It's exactly like what we created, but it's done uh, in the STL library, and you just uh, include memory. It's in the memory header file. And we have the same thing called shared pointer that is doing it. We have two more. Uh, uh, one is called weak pointer, and another one is an old one that is in C++11 and is deprecated now. I'm no, I don't remember even what it was. Something, auto pointer, I think it was, auto pointer, that no one uses anymore. It had some bugs and it didn't work properly. So, uh, a weak pointer, um, um, I don't even know what it is. I have to go find out. It's, uh, it's something that they created. It simulates the regular pointer that you have, which essentially means a pointer that, as they called it, it's weak, so memory leak is possible. So, it's, uh, the best is to, uh, 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 use either unique pointer or share pointer for whatever reason we want to use pointers. Uh, and that's it. Any questions? We didn't get to get to, we didn't have time to get to the dynamic memory thingy uh, file saving. Well, uh, I'll teach it as soon as I can. Uh, again, for now, workshop nine, please uh, don't do it until I teach it. As soon as I teach it, then it comes up for doing. So if there's there's a due date, I'm going to extend it. But if the due date is already set properly, then there is no worries. Do we have any questions? Uh, for that, can I ask a question uh, regarding the MS2? Uh, sure. So... I remember on the beginning of the online classes, you said that because of the week we stopped you, you were going to postpone everything yes. one week? that's one of the things that I asked to please send me an email now. Because lots of people send me an email. Send me an email, explain exactly what it is, and I'm going to reset everything. This is my afternoon's to-do list, to go through all the emails that, that you're going to send. So I'm going to ignore whatever it is. Your job is to just go on your computer, whatever that you asked me that you were supposed to do and I didn't do, please send me an email over it. Okay. Okay, thank you. And one more thing I want to say, please do not send private emails on Teams. If you want to send, if you want, if you need help with anything, get into Fardad's office. Over there, add, start a discussion and only remain in your own discussion and then we're going to share a screen and help you with whatever you need. Uh, do not use uh, the web version because I cannot get control use the uh, the application, install it on your computer, and what else we need to do? Uh, okay, so this, so the date for the, for when you said you were going to postpone was uh, all the dates, right? Uh, all the dates that was within or after the shutdown week. So anything that was within and after shutdown week will get extended. So MS2 will not be extended? Uh, MS2, what, what was the re rejection date of MS2? Was it in a shutdown date or before the shutdown date? The, the date that it was set was yes. before. How long before? How much before? Actually, it was due yesterday. It was yesterday, and so it's after, not yesterday. So it's going to be extended. I said anything on shutdown and after will be extended. 
Ah, okay, so it's going to be extended. It's going to be extended, yes. Ah, Drop okay. me an email and I'll do it, and I'll fix it. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Anyway, uh, Farda, yes. I just had a question. Uh, you said the... Uh, also, let me, let, me stop, let me stop the recording. Uh, anybody have any question on the topic that we want to teach? We, we were teaching now. Okay, so let me stop that. I don't want garbage to get into this. Not that you're asking garbage questions, but these are questions that are not related to the topic. So stop that.